Could popular Node.js libraries actually slow down your Next.js development? After years of working with hundreds of Node.js packages, I can tell you that even the most popular libraries just don't suit Next.js well. So in this video, I'm going to show you exactly which packages to use to make your Next.js development faster, easier, and safer. But before we start, I've grouped these packages into five categories to help you make sense of it all. Data transport, security, data storage, data transformation and validation, and finally, helpers and utilities. In each one of these categories, you might already be familiar with super popular packages like Axios, Mongoose, Yop, and so on. But later in the video, I'll show you why they might not be the best choice, and I'll introduce you to alternatives that integrate much better with Next.js. Whether you build a backend API for your front-end application, or you work with a distributed system with microservices, you'll need to transport data between your services. If you use HTTP, you might use the native fetch API or decide to use a library like Axios. For WebSocket, you might use the WS package. And for GraphQL, you might use Apollo Server and GraphQL packages. Of course, since Next.js itself is part of the Node.js ecosystem, you can absolutely install these packages and use them in your Next.js project. But it's not as simple as that. Let's say you decide to use GraphQL and the Apollo server package in your Next.js project. If you go ahead, you'll need to manually create an Apollo server instance and figure out a way to hook it into your Next.js application request handling. But fortunately, you don't have to go through all that hassle on your own. The Next.js team has already created some official libraries that will help you with that. You have the Next.js GraphQL and the Next.js Apollo packages. On top of installing the Apollo server and the GraphQL package in your project, you can also install the Next.js GraphQL and the Next.js Apollo package. The Next.js GraphQL gives you the GraphQL module that you can configure with the Apollo driver from the Next.js Apollo package. There are two huge advantages to this approach. First of all, you don't have to figure out how to hook the Apollo server or even set up GraphQL in your Next.js application. And the second thing is that you can code your application the Next.js way, which is using modules that you can configure and rely on the dependency injection system and the decorators. Behind the scene, what the Next.js GraphQL and the Next.js Apollo packages do is that they wrap the popular Node.js libraries and make them work with Next.js. But that's not the only wrapper library that Next.js offers. If you love Axios, for example, and you want to use it in your Next.js project, you can install the Next.js Axios package. Then you can create your own HTTP module that you can configure with options like timeout or base URL and so on. And that HTTP module will give you a HTTP service that you can inject into your services and use it to make the HTTP requests. But on top of simple wrappers libraries, Next.js also has the concept of transport platform. Basically, this is a way to abstract how Next.js service and application will communicate with the outside world. Basically, you can think of it like this. So if you want to communicate with someone that is far away, you can decide to use your phone to call them, send them an email, or if you are very old fashioned, you can even send them a fax. Next.js applications work exactly the same way. To communicate with other services and application in the outside world, it uses different transport platform. And by default, to communicate over HTTP, Next.js will use Express.js as its transport layer via the Next.js Platform Express package. But you can also use different transport platforms. So you have Next.js Platform Fastify. For Fastify, you can use the Next.js Platform Socket.io. For Socket.io, Next.js Platform WS and Next.js WebSockets for WebSockets. The idea behind all those transport platform packages is that instead of you having to figure out how to implement a certain transport protocol, the Next.js team has already done all that work for you. If you appreciate the insight on this channel and you are serious about mastering Next.js, I highly recommend checking out my course, Build Production Grade Next.js Applications. Inside, I'll walk you through the exact system senior backend engineers use to build robust, scalable Next.js applications. You'll get actionable advice on which patterns to use and when to use them, and I'll personally answer your questions in the course community. You can click the link in the description to join the course. But the official libraries are not just focused on transport. So in each category, you'll find a library to help you. 
So let me show you the other libraries that you should be using in your Nest.js project. In the security category, you have Nest.js Passport, which is a wrapper around the very popular Passport library, that's for authentication. You have Nest.js JWT, that's for generating and verifying JWT tokens. And you have Nest.js Throttler that can help you set great limits on your endpoints. And in the data storage category, if you want to connect to a database using TypeORM, you can use the Nest.js TypeORM library. And if you want to connect to a MongoDB database using Mongoose, you can use Nest.js Mongoose. When it comes to data validation and transformation, you can use the class validator and class transformer packages. So they are not really official Nest.js libraries, but they integrate very well with Nest.js because they use decorators and they work out of the box with certain Nest.js features like pipes. And finally, you have helpers and utilities packages such as Nest.js CLI. So this is the classic one. It will help you generate your project and the files inside your project. And to make testing your app super easy, you have the Nest.js testing library. And to load environment variable inside your application, you can use the Nest.js config package. And this is actually a wrapper around the .env uh, Node.js library, but it offers much more features and control. So you have validation, for example, and namespaces. And it's also worth mentioning the Nest.js Swagger package that can help you generate documentation for your API. The official Nest.js libraries are absolutely great, but if you only limit yourself to using those official libraries, you will be missing out on a lot out of the Node.js ecosystem. So here are some additional Node.js libraries that you might find super useful when building your Nest.js application. If you use Express as your transport platform, which is the default one, you basically have access to the whole Express middleware ecosystem. And you can just use those middleware in your Nest.js application, just like you would in a normal Express application. For example, you can use the super popular security middleware Helmet to secure your Nest.js application. For data transformation and validation, you can of course use libraries like Yup or Zod. I personally have a soft spot for Zod because it works very well with TypeScript. And for data storage, instead of using the Nest.js TypeORM package, for example, you could directly use your favorite database driver instead. This can actually be a much better option if you need total control over your database queries, if you have like very strong performance constraints, for example, it can be a better, better option. Or you could go with another ORM such as Prisma or Drizzle or whichever new fancy ORM you find is working best for you. But at least now you know that before reaching out to the most popular Node.js library, you should first check if there is a Nest.js official library because it will save you a lot of time and effort instead of you trying to figure out exactly how you can make it fit with your Nest.js application. And even if you don't use an official Nest.js library, it's actually a great idea to learn about them because they are basically the template of how you should be integrating your favorite Node.js libraries into your Nest.js application. But this is only possible if you understand the key concepts of Nest.js. And you can watch this next video where I go through each one of these concepts in less than 10 minutes.